in the press box. They're trying to get the Mississippi mustache to New York City. Guys, how fun would that be? I mean, he's deserving, but he's never been to the Big Apple. You know he'd take full advantage. Well, he has had some journey that has led him to Washington State, and he'll start through the air on the opening possession. And with a check down, he loves to find James Williams in the flat. And James Williams will make players miss. J.B. Brown brings him down after a gain of six. Yeah, and if you've not watched Minshew this season, get ready to see a lot of that. There's just one other quarterback in all of college football as far as throwing that check down. Just about 9% of the time he throws it down the field. He loves that outlet. James Williams, the number one receiver on this team. He'll bounce it outside and pick up a first down. Sure fun watching these guys yesterday at walkthrough, wasn't it, Bob? I mean, it was just such a choreographed dance. Almost no words were spoken. It was all signals just like this, a massive amount of reps. And not one time when Minshew was there in that shotgun did you or me see that ball hit the ground. Right up the middle, Travell Harris. Well into Arizona territory. He's got a first down. And he picks up 27. He is a speedster. You've got the size with Patman. You've got Williams out of the backfield. And Harris, school record holder in the 100 meter down out of Tampa, Florida, from Tampa to Pullman. And the speedster that loves to stretch the middle of the field. Minshew has all day. There's the check down again to Williams. And he picks up about a yard. Now, talking about being at that practice yesterday, the simplicity of it all, and yet the complication of yes. this system, how it's all on Minshew. You'll see that guy as basically a third base coach. Imagine a baseball third base coach that makes one signal to the batter. And that's it. It's not across the chest, to the ear, on the leg. He basically just gives him one gun. <laughs> and Minshew knows exactly what that means. It is fun to watch. And boy, are they in perfect synchronicity at all times. Now Minshew under pressure. And this time he dumps it off. It'll be third down and nine. But there's a flag downfield in the secondary. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 19 in the defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. So Scotty Young is getting an earful from the head coach. Yeah, and you could hear it, you could read his lips for what? Why would you do that? It, it, we, we're going to have a third and nine against the number one passing team in America. And at some point after that ball is incomplete, remember Scotty Young, a player suspended for the first game, suspended from spring and summer activities. A guy they've welcomed back, they've loved to have back, but a foolish mistake there. Max Borgie, the true freshman, grinds out. About three and a half yards. And quite frankly, I'm not even sure what Scotty Young did. It was all the way down, about 30 yards downfield from where Minshew was under pressure. But obviously, Kevin Sumlin knows what yeah, he did. Yeah, he saw it. He's not giving an earful to that back judge or the side judge. He's giving an earful to Scotty Young there, the sophomore with just a unforced error against a group that's 9-1 and one, that you can't afford those kind of mistakes. Minshew extending the play and now he turns turtle and just tries to get back near the line of scrimmage he lost about a yard and a half Derek Bowles brought him down for a sack so it will now be third down in the red zone third down and about eight yeah and I think you see here on this opening drive you had the one shot down the field but Arizona defensively is a group that if you were to compose a defense to match up with what Washington State likes to do, you need size up front to have that. You need tremendous speed at the second level with Schooler and Fields, a linebacker. You've got that. You've got some speedy DBs that are playing their best ball the last month of the season as well.
Wildcats rush only three. Minshew steps up in the pocket, fires a strike for a first down inside the 10 yard line. It's first and goal at the nine. Tay Martin came back to help out the quarterback. Gosh, and I just love that. I just love Gardner's poise. Any young quarterback out there, as you've watched college football like we did all day today from our hotel room, you see a lot of young D quarterbacks just panic and just try to flee the pocket. This is a guy that does not do that. He will step up. He will scan the entire field. He will keep those eyes and feet connected as well as any QB in college football. Another swing pass to Williams. Tiptoes along the sideline. And where will they say he went out? He got down to the two. What balance, the tightrope by the red shirt junior. He picked up seven. It's second and goal. What a weapon to have, and it's a yards after both catch and contact there. You will hear, wow, that is tremendous body control. Every defensive coordinator says the same thing against systems like this. You've got to tackle in space. If you do not make that initial tackle, you will not beat the Cougs. They got him down to the one-yard line. Williams and Borgie both in the backfield, flanking Minshew. Williams, end zone, touchdown. Hello, College Football Committee. I know you've watched football all afternoon long. You've seen a lot of close games. You saw Ohio State pull it out at the very end. And yes, in front of a stadium that's got some students absent as Thanksgiving break began on Friday. What a tone setter to come out on that opening drive and march her right down the field as Minshew a perfect five for five. The number one passer in all of college football. Five for five on the opening drive. Engineers a touchdown strike to begin. This season, Taco Bell and Chewbacca apparently are celebrating student sections and passionate fans like the Washington State Cougars by awarding the best student section of the year at ESPN.com slash Taco Bell and see if your team made this week's rankings and see how your school can compete. Have some fun here at Martin Stadium and why not? It is fun to watch this Mike Leach offense be engineered by Gardner Minshew. And they were very efficient, helped out by a Scotty Young on sportsmanlike conduct penalty, but wiped away an incompletion and a would-be third and nine. And the Cougs take advantage. It'll come out to the 25 for Arizona. And J.J. Taylor, who had 40 carries for 192 yards a couple of weeks ago in a win over Colorado. He is the definition, Brock, of a workhorse. Yeah, and it's just such a one-two punch with he and Khalil Tate, especially if Khalil decides to run the football tonight. As you heard from Allison earlier, as healthy as he's been, he got nicked up in the opener. He's been hobbling around. It was for the first time last week. Norm Mazzoni telling us that, you know, he didn't see Khalil hobbling, and that is a one-two dynamic punch. Really got after this Cougs defense a season ago. Swing pass to Taylor. And he goes down well behind the line. All the way back inside the 20 yard line. Lost six. Peyton Pallour was there to make the stop. And you immediately see what? Six different Crimson helmets there flying to the football. You know, that's a ball that's got to be on the front hip there. Elbow goes down, Taylor goes down, and doesn't stop the pursuit. Taylor looking for a cutback lane, and he got three yards. So now it's third down and long. And a nice little line stun there from Washington State. Never will you see those defensive linemen for Khalil Tate and that offensive line line up in a stagnant matter. They're going to be moving, slanting, stemming before the snap. Trying to create as much confusion for that group and quarterback as possible. Tate has all day. He's going to float one up the sideline. And it's intercepted. Marcus Strong played it beautifully. Picks it off. 
And great field position for Washington State. You saw what I saw, Bob. You thought he was going to throw it down the sidelines to his open. That's what Noel Mazzoni saying, too. Mazzoni, you thought he was going to throw it down the sidelines. He had an open outlet receiver instead, and this is one of the challenges for Khalil. You could see J.J. was behind the linebacker instead. Whenever he has somebody deep, he gives his guys a chance, which receivers certainly love. They want their opportunities to have those one-on-ones, but when you're playing a ball-hawking, very fast defense, you got to be a lot more precise than that. Ninth interception as a team this season for the Cougs. And now they start at their own 47 yard line. Minshew off play action. Easy pitch and catch to Borgie over the middle. Flag thrown late. Bottled up by Tony Fields. And did Tony Fields get a piece of the face mask? I think he did. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 13. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Chacho Uloa came in to help on the tackle, although it looks like Fields is the one that actually got a piece of the face mask, as we thought. So they got the right foul, but the wrong number. So two 15 yard penalties in the first six minutes of the game against Arizona. Delayed handoff to Borgie. That might be another face masking call. P.J. Johnson grabbed the face mask. Might have to tack on another 15. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number 52. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Pretty good sign here of a team that's uh, playing at a little different speed than the other team right now. And Max Borgie has got some kind of turnover in quickness. That's back-to-back -back face mask because he's run away from linebackers, defense alignment. And Kevin Sumlin knows you go on the road. You play a top 10 team in college football. You cannot give up 15 yards of real estate via three penalties. Minshew off his back foot for a couple of yards just inside the 10. Kyle Squeet was able to squeeze one to about the nine and a half. Minshew hasn't missed yet. Seven for his first seven. And now a lot of pre-snap motion for Washington State. Minshew over the middle. It'll be a first down. Renard Bell brought down shy of the goal line, but it will be first and goal for the Cougars at the one. Yeah, and just watch the feet and the posture of Gardner Minshew. We were out here yesterday on a cold night. He was shirtless. There was the Pirate giving him the signals, and just like last night of practice, that ball not hitting the ground, that's down 9 for 9 to begin this game, and it starts with his fundamentals, his strength in that pocket, and just tremendous boys. Fade, back right pylon, incomplete. Aesop Winston, had he caught that, would have been the seventh different receiver to already catch a pass from Minshew. And we're only halfway through the yeah, first quarter. You've seen fade routes, you've seen shallow cross, you saw the seam down the field, you see the outlets to the running backs, and you see it at lightning speed. Right? It's not the tempo necessarily between snaps. It's once that ball is snapped, they are attacking every inch of this field. Borgi muscles his way to the goal line and in for the touchdown. He carried J.B. Brown across the goal line. Turn that Tate interception into seven points. That's now the 11th touchdown for that true freshman, the Colorado Player of the Year that's just added yet another dimension. Stanford wanted him in the 11th hour, and that's pretty darn impressive. That's carrying a 265-pound defensive end, and J.B. Brown right on his back in the will and the want to to get six. Wow, 14 nothing. 
takeaways, penalties. Arizona doing all they can to help out the Cougars early. ESPN College Football is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And in part by Mitsubishi Motors. Drive your ambition. You can't turn around on the Palouse and not see someone that's got a fake mustache. <laughs> the Coug himself has been inspired by Gardner Minshew. And yeah, it is just, it's Starsky and Hutch everywhere you look. I mean, rewind the clock like seven months ago. Spring here in April. <laughs> Seriously. There was no Gardner Minshew here. There was no mustaches. There was no any of this. It is the beauty of college football. We see stars emerge every year, and especially at this position in systems like this. Lamar Jackson largely came out of nowhere. Baker Mayfield, you know, walked on two different places. Largely came out of nowhere. And this guy wasn't even here in the spring invigorating this program. It wasn't until this fall, and it didn't take very long. As you heard Mike Leach tell me on our three-mile walk, it felt a lot longer than that yesterday, Bob. And he got a sense really early that this was a group that really enjoyed just playing the game together. And I think Mike Leach is enjoying this crew as much as any as he's coach as a, as a head guy in almost two decades. Are we going to see some pride from Arizona now? Down by a couple of scores on a cold night here in Pullman. J.J. Taylor will bring it out. And he loses the football. And it looks like he got bailed out by one of his teammates. He's a Chacho Uloa that was able to jump on top of the loose ball at the 11-yard line. So Arizona does indeed have the football and our first chance on our show to say hi to Ad Denver. Nothing here. And a zone read to start off a drive from deep in Arizona's own end as Khalil Tate gives it to J.J. Taylor, and he picks up three. Yeah, and if you're Arizona right now, you are thinking first down. is a tempo team, and they will push the pace more than Washington State. You have got to see that first down marker move to get some rhythm going. Taylor again. For another yard, maybe. It'll be third down and a long six. He ran right into one of my favorites. I'm going to talk about another story. Taylor Comfort, that defensive tackle. There's Tago as well. He gets in on the action. But 56 right there is one of the great stories in all of college football. A walk on. It was ready to be done. It really had not played any ball. And Mike said, Coach Leach, will you stick around for a year if I give you a scholarship? And what a factor he has been for these Cougs. Tate just about lost his footing. Now gets out of the pocket. Flag down back behind the line of scrimmage as Tate is brought down a couple of yards shy of the line to gain. Hunter Dale was there. I think that's top gonna, Khalil Tate. I think that's going to be a hold on the freshman right tackle anyway. And that will be declined quickly by Wazoo. Holding offense number 78. That can be declined. Fourth down. The right tackle, the true freshman, Laie. He's played a couple games on the left side. You see him here. Just a three man rush. Tago getting upfield. He grabs a little face mask, a little of the jersey. Tago been a force these last three weeks. Three sacks over the last three games. I think Arizona on a cold night is feeling the fury and the speed of this Wazoo team in every single phase. Just barely got the punt away. And the fair catch is made by Travell Harris at the 35-yard line. 14-0 Washington State, and they've got great field position again. That close to a block punt. You want to talk about must-see TV? It is Monday Night Football. 9-1 against 9-1. The Chiefs and the Rams 
at 8.15 Eastern on ESPN. Simulcast in Spanish on ESPN News, the ESPN app. Our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6. The top two quarterbacks arguably right now, at least production-wise, in the National Football League. Will it be pinball machine numbers, you think, on Monday night? Or sometimes do the defenses yeah. rise up a little bit because they play against such yep. speed? As a little tunnel screen here is set up to Tay Martin. He gets bottled up and has nowhere to go. When you play against skill position speed in practice every week, yes. the way those two respective defenses can practice, what kind of an advantage does that give you? in the Monday night matchup. Yeah, that's a good point, Bobby, but the challenge is both of them run the ball so doggone well. They're just not a one-dimensional, just like this Washington State team. If you've not watched them before, don't get fooled by the imbalance of the rushing and the passing numbers because those little checkdowns and those screens, that's their run game. These Rams and Chiefs both run it really well. That time Minshew with an off-balance throw as Arizona did something that last week I don't think we saw Colorado do once the no. entire game and that was blitz take a chance and bring some numbers yep. after the wazoo quarter we did not see the buffaloes do that one time and they just brought six and played straight man uh, cover zero had the middle safety right there but that is something that gardner does not see a lot of teams are scared to death to leave this receiving crew in one-on-one -on -one situations well they forced third down and 11 and they're showing blitz again they will rush only four Minshew to the sideline incomplete and I think you have to do that. I think you have to get that quarterback some people in his face, just feel a little different rhythm and timing. I think these defensive coordinators at times, and I get it, man, you start to watch all this tape, and it's scary as they attack so much real estate and so much space that you get scared and think, oh, if we can just drop eight or drop seven on every play and keep everything in front of us and tackle. Well, no, sometimes you've got to force the issue to get that quarterback out of rhythm. Aesop Winston running wind sprints behind the line of scrimmage. And a fair catch is made at the 29-yard line by Shun Brown. And in that game, come Monday night, it'll be the same thing for Mahomes and Goff. Because teams are scared to death to blitz them. And how are we going to blitz? they got this screen game, and they can dump it here. And Kevin Sumlin knows, man, when you've got an offense, and he's had some of them through the years, and has so many weapons, you put a lot of fear into a defense. I filled in for Stephen A. Smith uh, doing a talk show a few weeks ago. I was talking to Ryan Clark about trying to be a defensive player, looking at that kind of speed oh. all over the field for both teams that we'll see on Monday night. Play action, Khalil Tate. Long throw to the sideline. Tony Ellison on a slide is able to scoop it up, and he picks up 12. And you know the point I made to Ryan Clark. And that's a nice catch by Tony Ellison. How good does a personnel department have to be to accumulate enough talent where you make all of the other teams in the NFL look slow? Yep. J.J. Taylor slipped and lost a couple. Well, I'll tell you what, J.J. Taylor does not look like himself here in the first seven, eight minutes of play. I mean, this guy has run for 150-plus the last three games. He has been such a factor. You saw him on the opening play slip, trying to get the ball in his hands out on the perimeter. He's got to keep his feet underneath him. He's as dynamic as they get in college football. The fourth leading rusher in all the FBS. He needs to be a factor to balance out this offense. Khalil Tate. I haven't seen him do much of that this year. Not only because of the ankle injury, but maybe wanting to prove he can be a little bit more of a pocket quarterback. He came into tonight with only 153 yards rushing on the season. Last year, he ran for 146 in this game. Yeah, 420 total offense against this group. Oh. Easily picking up a first down is J.J. Taylor. Yeah, that was a, I'm not going to screw around and try to run horizontally here and lose my feet. I'm going to run through the tackle, and I'm going to knock the helmet right off of Hunter Dale. So Hunter Dale has to come off the field for a play. This time bottled up behind the line is Taylor, and he will go down for a loss of a yard. And that's that little stunt right there. Had a good conversation with Noel Mazzoni because their back set, their pre-snap alignment, does show a lot of their tendencies. When that back's to the right in that shotgun formation, that run's going left, and you're going to watch Washington State slant and stunt and try to get right into that. 
Arizona felt like maybe going to the pistol was a way to offset some of those tendencies, but Wazoo's turned right into that for a negative play. Another zone read, pulling it back on play action and drawing a flag on the seam route was Stanley Berryhill. He was the intended receiver. Darian Moulton was there in coverage, and Moulton may have grabbed Berryhill on the crosser. That's your classic run pass option right there. That is something that the Wildcats feel is it Khalil at his best when he can just react like that run earlier where he can react and explode in the run game. Same in the pass. Pass interference. Defense number three. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. I like that conversation with the back judge right there. I think Darian's saying, hey, I can have my arm on him as long as I don't pull. And I think you heard that back judge say, yes, you can. But when that body turns, and I think those back judges and side judges, when they see that DB have his hand on a receiver and that body turns, you're going to draw that penalty. Officials conference as Khalil Tate comes over to the sideline. Pretty good response here from Arizona. You asked earlier, they're going to have a little bit of pride here. And the three and out defensively, forcing the issue, bringing a little bit of pressure, getting to Gardner a couple times. We're seeing a little bit of Khalil's athleticism. I think this is a night, if I'm Kevin Someone, I tell Khalil Tate before the game, hey kid, run for 100 yards tonight. Because the more you run, the more you're going to be able to throw and pass the ball. The ruling on the field was the penalty was enforced correctly. First down. Okay. That was an officials conference where they all collectively just kind of patted themselves on the back after it was over. Play action for Tate. Heaves one to the end zone. Underthrown. Scooped up. Sean Poindexter. Touchdown with a flag down. If it stands, it's the ninth receiving touchdown of the season for Sean Poindexter. And it's also the first touchdown reception that Darian Moulton will have given up. Defense number three. That's the first, according to Pro Football Focus, College Football Focus, the first touchdown reception Moulton's given up since 2016. And Poindexter doing his best, Arcega Whiteside. And you can hear the hometown faithful here. Does that left hand push him to the ground? I think Moulton's starting to fall, to be honest with you. I think he's starting to lose his footing before that arm. And I don't see an arm extend from Poindexter as well. How about the last five catches for Mr. Poindexter? Not bad. Five touchdowns. That's pretty efficient. Little misdirection by Arizona before they line up Aversick to try the point after. And after a sluggish start, to say the least, for Arizona, they get a three and out on defense. Pretty good field position. They take advantage and they've cut the lead in half. Well, this is what they wanted to do. They felt like this was a matchup. With the former high school volleyball player who doesn't even have to go up and spike that one, but actually just has to come back and get it. That was a matchup they wanted to take it, you know, to, to throw out. Five, six, seven times tonight. They're going to throw it molten. They're going to throw it strong. Because, frankly, it's what Tate likes to do, too. <laughs> you, you start to watch the tape, but anytime anybody's running downfield, Khalil's like your kid on the schoolyard, like, I'm going to throw it up to you. We're going to play this game of 500, all right? Now, I'm going to throw it up, and you're going to go up, and you're going to catch it and make plays for me on the back end. Although one of the biggest plays on that drive was a nine yard scramble yep. by Tate. And really it comes down to a decision I think Brock he's going to make. Does my ankle feel healthy enough and am I willing to run the ball the way I haven't this entire season but the way he did time and time again last year to make him look like coming into this season a possible Heisman candidate. Yeah and I know we talked with Kevin and Noel about this when we called the Utah game. And I said, have you guys just shown him Lamar Jackson tape? Because Lamar Jackson was a first-round NFL pick who never got away from his strength of running the football. And they said, absolutely. He has got to be willing to run it because that run will ultimately set up more of those one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Chevelle Harris from the two. Makes a man miss in the alley. 
and they drag him down at the 35-yard line. It'll be the fourth personal foul as Luce, Lucas Habrasic, the kicker, is going to get called for a 15-yard foul on the takedown of Travell Harris. Personal foul, horse collar tackle against the receiving team. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, it was on the kicking team, and it was the kicker himself, the last line of defense, and you start to see just the speed of Travell. There's no question about that. Was that face mask first and then into the jersey and shoulder pad? They called it a horse collar tackle. Now, by the definition of horse collar tackle, to me, that didn't look like a horse collar no. tackle. It looked more like a face masking foul. Bottom line, they needed to give a 15-yard penalty out of some sort, and they did. And now Washington State will start across the 50-yard line again. Here's Calvin Jackson. And it's a four-and-a-half-yard gain on first down to Jim Blackwood, who is our referee expert here in the booth. Define horse collar tackle for us. Well, the horse collar tackle has to be from behind. It has to bring the guy straight down. That would cause some damage to him. That's what the purpose of the horse collar was for. And that didn't look like a horse collar tackle. That was not a horse collar tackle. Although since he grabbed the face mask, I guess 15 yards is 15 yards. Minshew to Borgie. First down. And he just looks like McCaffrey, doesn't he? He wears the wristbands. He had the same trainer in Colorado, and it is just simply the quick feet. He had the advantage of being an early enrollee, did Max, getting on campus here. And like Mike Leach has done so many times, so many players through the years, and even guys out of the backfield, just finding creative roles, even as very young players for him. Borgie with a stiff arm. Running through arm tackles and grinds out two yards. Minshew is a Mississippi guy. He's a Southern kid, but he doesn't seem too bothered by this 28 degree weather. When I watched him warming up pregame, he was rocking a sleeveless shirt. He is taking some extra precautions, though, to make sure his hands stay warm. You can see the hand warmer around his waist. It's actually battery powered with a heater in it to make sure it's warmer than some of the other ones they have. And he is wearing that glove on his non throwing hand as well. And Brock has one of those up here, Allison. <laughs> Second down and eight. Minshew will run. It'll be third down and five as Colin Schooler, the leading tackler for Arizona, was there to bring him down. Quarterbacks are high maintenance. I've learned that over the years from working with them. <laughs> Look, I'll tell you what quarterbacks can deal with. You can deal with cold. It's cold and wind, and there's really no wind at all. We were in Boulder a week ago, and the swirling wheel winds were creating a little bit of havoc for Gardner, especially down the field throwing the ball. It is a very calm night, albeit crisp and cool. Big play here after the Arizona touchdown, keeping the drive alive for Washington State, third down and five. Play clock under five. Minshew on the slam. Right at the line again. It's good for a first down. Renard Bell walled off Scotty Young and was able to pick up five yards. Yeah, Renard and Gardner and a bunch of these Cougs yesterday on, a, on a, an evening practice, much like today. It's 28 degrees. It, the kickoff feels like 28 because there is no wind. And yesterday, they got their work and skins and shirts largely. And had no issue with this cold environment. Only a three-man rush. So Minshew can stand like a statue and deliver to a wide open. Calvin Jackson to the pylon. Another touchdown. must be fun to be the quarterback in this system and Brock it must be really fun when the opposition rushes only three and you can stand back there completely unmolested and deliver a strike yeah. to a wide open receiver yeah the one thing you hear all the time from Mike Leach and anybody that runs this system is you're looking for space and this concept you will see all of the time 
you will see these guys try to run that mesh concept underneath. OK, and then where is the space? Where is the space created here? Look at this wide open space. That is all that Gardner's looking for. He is just looking for the space to throw into, and then he's going to throw the shot. And you look at that one more time, and look at the space. Why is the space created? Well, you can't have three on two. Anytime you have three on two, look at the green grass it creates. It's just damage. Too easy. Standing behind him at their speed through last night and watching Gardner Minshew just wait for those windows yep. to develop. Yes. And he throws to spots. That's it. And these receivers run to those spots, catch it in stride, and it's it is like an orchestra to watch when they've got it humming. Yeah, look at the yards after catch. I mean, I, I just would not be a D coordinator that would just rush three and try to trust guys to just find defenders and eat up all that space. I would force the issue. You know, their best drive tonight, three out of four of them, there's only one of them where they brought any pressure. And when they did, they got the three and out. I just don't think you can sit and rush three against this guy. Let's head back to Adnan. Man, that's one we're going to keep our eyes on because what type of a debut would it be for Herm Edwards Oof. at Arizona State if they could find a way to win that game, win next week, and make it to a Pac-12 title game? They still control their own destiny, but down by two scores early second quarter to Oregon. A keeper for Tate. Gets a block on the edge. A long run to pick up three yards. Nick Begg held the edge. And Marcus Strong was out there to help force out Khalil Tate. And that should take us to the end of the quarter. As it doesn't look like the Cats are going to be able to snap the ball before the clock goes to all zeros. Twenty-one seven Washington State after one. It is a fun place to be on the Palouse when the Cougs are playing solid football. And they're a top 10 team for a reason. Well, welcome back to ESPN's College Football presented by Geico. It was a fun three-mile walk yesterday with the old head coach from his house to the stadium. And yeah, even at one point, the river runs through this town. Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> and he mixes his drink. I've seen it in a variety of ways, all sorts of different drinks, and he does it the old-fashioned way with his finger. Khalil Tate, room to run if he chooses to do so, and he will. Hesitated a bit, picked up four. It will be third down and four. Peyton Pelour brought him down. And that's not a surprise. Peyton is a sideline to sideline linebacker, and I just don't want that hesitation. I don't think any Arizona fan or any coach or anybody because if you hesitate against Peyton Pelour in the rest of these Cougs as fast as they run sideline to sideline and as fast as Khalil can go when he decides to hit the turbo button, he's got to utilize it tonight. Here comes the Wazoo Blitz, dropped by Shun Brown as Khalil Tate rushed his throw. And Washington State gets a stop. Sean Brown got up slowly. You know, there's been a lot of quality additions here. You know, this offseason, Gardner getting all the attention as he should. But I'll tell you what, Mike Leach also added one heck of a defensive coordinator this offseason, Tracy Clays. You see the bar cutting him off just a little bit in his view, but that man is one terrific defensive coordinator. And he's got his moves in the right spot so many times defensively. Fair catch made by Travell Harris all the way back at about the 21 yard line. Really good kick from Dylan Clump, 48 yards with hang time. Well, Tuesday, ESPN, the exclusive reveal of the next college football playoff top 25 at 7 Eastern. Reese and the guys will break it down from top to bottom. They'll have a live interview with Rob Mullins, the committee chair. You can always watch live on the ESPN app from everywhere. And the resume continues to build for Washington State. Now they will need some chaos in front of them to have any chance to make it into the top four. But 
I think they were a little upset after the way that LSU played against Alabama to not at least move in front of the Tigers as they stayed put. Minshew, tunnel screen, incomplete for Trevell Harris. Well, I, I was. I, I thought they were deserving of the number seven spot. Just the way that they have been playing. LSU beats a really bad Arkansas team by a possession. Wazoo goes on the road and just blows the doors off the Buffaloes. And it's about, you know, the, the whole body of work. And what Gardner has done this year, what this crew has done in both phases, top 25 offensively and defensively. And by the way, that resume is going to have an opportunity to look a whole lot better in the next few weeks. The Washington Huskies may be in the top 15 and either Utah or Arizona State in the Pac-12 championship game. Minshew's got man for man with Tay Martin down the sideline. And we've got two flags thrown to secondary. Make it a third. Lorenzo Burns was trying to stay with Tay Martin. Yeah, and you see no debate by him because he just simply grabbed the wrist of Tay Martin and did not allow him to go get that ball. I'll tell you what I like tonight from Gardner. He's pushing the ball down the field a little bit. That 9.7%, that is his downfield rate, second lowest in all the FBS, and you're not seeing that tonight. You've seen that in cut, you've seen the, the seam route that time, it, it go route down the sidelines. The conversation here is that pass interference or is that a hold? as Burns was clearly grabbing the wrist in the arm of Tay Martin. There are two fouls by the defense on the play. Personal foul. Defense, number one. That penalty will be declined. Pass interference. Defense, number two. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's Arizona. They are racking up the 15-yard fouls. They had two to choose from on that play. You're going to see the contact and when you're holding that arm and you're not allowing that receiver to go get it and you're in full view of everybody Kevin someone's feeling it in every phase offense defense special teams right now his guys are reaching his guys are grabbing his guys are just simply a step behind the Cougs pitch and catch to Aesop Winston for four brought down by Colin Schooler was that Jameer Calvin who made the catch? Four man rush, draw play behind it to Williams. James Williams breaking tackles down the sideline. Finally brought down by Tony Fields. That might have been all that kept James Williams from housing that. 43 yards on the run into the red zone. Yeah, and he just can't block it any better. So just when you're pushing the ball all over the field and you're utilizing every eligible receiver, well, then our linemen are going to go target perfectly. And I'm going to get my left tackle, Andre Dillard, an all-conference player, out front of that. Well, and just give Williams the opportunity while well, he's done so much damage as a receiver showing you He's run for 1,500 yards in his Coop career as well. Borgie in the flat. Gets walloped at about the 11-yard line. Picked up six. Scotty Young came up and delivered the blow. We've seen some good offenses here this season. And could that be crown of the helmet? Scotty Young comes in there and uses the crown of his helmet. And remember, the booth can initiate that call. And now that might be exactly what's happening. You know, we've seen some good offenses this year. We saw Oklahoma and we saw Washington State last week, but it's amazing. The ruling on the field is, a, is under review for the persons reviewing targeting. Yeah, that's the booth initiating targeting as a possible call as there was no flag thrown for targeting on the field. But that is crown of the helmet potentially on Scotty Young. Yeah, you just see the whole deal. You see that positioning. They're trying to get these players to get it out of their system. Do not lead with the crown of your helmet. He's clearly a runner. He's not a defenseless player. Now, does he hit with more of that shoulder? That is going to be the question. I'm glad the booth stopped this to take a review. Is it the shoulder or is it the crown of the helmet that initiates that contact?
That may be a little more of that shoulder that initiates that contact. Well, Jim Blackwood, for a long time, you have been not only a coordinator of officials, but also a coordinator of replay officials. So this is your domain. What do you think? The, this is targeting uh, with a crown on the helmet. Now, the initial contact used to be what we considered years ago, but the initial contact has been removed. If there is forcible contact to the head and it's a crown of the helmet, it should stay as a targeting foul. And it was not ruled targeting on the field. This was the replay booth seeing that. A shot that we were able to show them after the play was over. They buzzed down and initiated this call. Let's see what they've got. After review, it's determined that there's no targeting on the play. So the replay booth decides that it was enough, I guess, yeah. of a glancing blow that they're not going to get Scotty Young for targeting. So we'll play on second down at four from the 11-yard line. Yeah, they're going to deem that it's more shoulder rather than that crown that comes in. They're going to deem that that's more shoulder. I'll tell you, we've had a lot of these over, over the course of the season. We had a couple in the game last week with, with Washington State and Colorado. Nate Lamb got booted out of a game on a very difficult call. In that case, if you're Scotty Young, you can avoid that. You could absolutely have your eyes up, your heads up, your head up, and avoid even the review of that play. Play action, end zone, touchdown. Desmond Patman, great fake from Gardner Minshew, and he's got another touchdown pass. I said to you before the game, Bob, that as the season expands and these expectations on this team grow, and Gardner Minshew starts to, starts to feel the weight of so much of this, right? So much of this hype and attention and mustaches everywhere. You just wondered if he would flinch at all. I think the first 18 minutes of this game, he's not flinching, man. He is absolutely cutting it loose as much as he has all season long. And the play action fake. And once again, he sees green grass and space and the multitude of weapons, including Mr. Patman, too easy. 16 completions to nine different receivers for Minshew.
There are no six foot, 280 no. pound walk on defensive tackles. 280? Starting to Alabama. The, Bob, the umpire is bigger than him. <laughs> I'm reading the measurements I was given. Third down and seven. Blitz. Tate. Trying to turn the corner. There's the speed that we've known from Khalil Tate. He stays in bounds, and he's got a big chunk play across the 50 and out of bounds with a gain of 32 to the 37 of Wazoo. Okay, now, this is the danger, right? When you bring the house and they brought everybody, and you lose containment against this guy, even if he's 80%, 90%, he is going to see that green grass. And I'll say it again to you, Khalil, anytime you've got green grass in front of you, don't get pretty. Don't try to push that ball and find a completion. You go gobble up those yards. Play action. Being chased again. He's going to heave one up the seam. In stride. Tony Ellison. Touchdown. I don't know that Khalil Tate has looked better this season on back-to-back -back plays than he just looked on those two plays. I would agree with you. And Colorado may say when he threw for five touchdowns and 300 some yards, but many of those were just one on one jump balls. Those last two plays, and you see the chest bump from some of those coaches on the field. Those last two plays were special. That was the stuff he was doing a year ago when he was the conversation to go to New York City for the Heisman. A wonderful play by Ellison to spin around Bolton. That's now two touchdown passes that Darian has given up. It's two more than he's given up the last two seasons, and that's the kind of playmaker you need against a top 10 team. And Khalil Tate threw for five touchdowns against Colorado, but he only ran the ball four times for 15 total yards. So what we saw on that drive, his legs and his arm generating a touchdown. Special.
I know it leaves you vulnerable on the back end and you're more susceptible to the big play. But it's death by a thousand paper cuts if you're just going to rush three or four against him. It's another four man rush. And Minshew all day to throw. Drops it in. Aesop Winston right up the seam to the 41 yard line. I mean, these are catch and run balls. I mean, this is what Baker Mayfield was doing a season ago in his race to the Heisman Trophy. It is just in perfect stride. No win tonight. A week ago, that accuracy in the first half, especially, was a little troubled in those swirly winds. Not the case this evening. Ten different players already have caught at least one pass tonight from Gardner Minshew, and we're not even halfway through the second quarter. Little shoulder fake here. Steps up in the pocket. Another wide open receiver. Calvin gets to the sideline. And Washington State is back in the red zone again. Yes. Check this out. He uses Des Gardner his shoulder so very well. But watch this little step up. Watch what it does to the linebackers. Look at that. Watch these linebackers right here when he steps up. It just attracts them for that half step. And that creates, again, that void that he's going to throw into. Just the subtleties of the eyes, the little nuance with the with the shoulders, and then ultimately that step up. And those are two really good linebackers in Schooler and Fields to create that opportunity to throw right behind their ear. Here comes the blitz. Minshew off his spot a bit. And they're going to say that that is a completion to Jimmy or Calvin. And he is down at the 14-yard line with a gain of five. And that looks like a good call. Yep. Arizona showing blitz. And here they come. Minshew beats it on the slant to Kyle Sweet. First down to the five yard line. And that's the beater, right? I mean, if you're going to bring pressure right there, and you're going to bring five or more, then you're going to run these little outlets. And these are all adjustments these receivers have made. Kyle Sweet set it for five years here on the Palouse with a couple different quarterbacks now, but he can see that pressure. He's got a one on one, and his only job is to get inside that nickel defender and give Minshew the opportunity to put it on his chest. Five for five for 70 yards on the drive already. Gardner Minshew, and he's got it first and goal at the five-yard line. Quick hitter, Renard Bell stood up and driven back. That was well diagnosed by Azizi Hearn. Looks like he lost a yard. That's pretty good pursuit. It's a one-on-one -on -one to the bottom, man. Does he love that fade route to Winston? A pump fake to Williams in the flat. Right to the goal line. And squeezing it into the end zone. That's a touchdown to Calvin Jackson. Third of the half for Gardner Minshew. A second touchdown for Calvin Jackson. Just looks like it did last night, doesn't it? Last night, they did it against air. And there are times where it doesn't look that much different when the opponent's on the field. I think I even just saw a smile from Coach Leach. They fumble the snap on the point after. So they leave a point on the field as Trey Tinsley couldn't handle the snap. 34-14, Wazoo. Gardner Minshew perfect on the last drive and Gardner Minshew piling up numbers that are going to get him to New York City in the Heisman conversation if he keeps on playing the way he has played because he's got 209 yards and three touchdowns in the first half. Bob Shoes and Brock Ewart and Allison Williams here at Martin Stadium. And I love the story that Bruce Feldman wrote on him in the athletic this weekend. And I love Gardner saying you know what I learned my lesson. I was captain in East Carolina. I got benched.
And I got benched because I got tight. And I started to look over my shoulder, and I promised myself at that point that would never happen again. That if I got another chance, I was just going to let it rip. I was going to play with fun and a carefree attitude. And he's done just that. A short kick that gets behind Peterson. That's a live ball. All the way back inside the five, into the end zone, and Wazoo might have it for a touchdown. And they do. Disaster for Arizona. Keona Wilson comes up with the recovery. Job number one, if you are a return man, Brock Eward, yep. you got to catch the football. No question. But look at the number of Wazoo. Look at them. One, two, three, four. There's five Wazoo Cougars flying down the field before you see a Wildcat in the screen. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Tell you one thing, man. The Pac-12 officiating crew, <laughs> they provide us a level of entertainment at times. Blake Mazza with another extra point midway through the second quarter, and it's 41 to 14. Not quite as entertaining as this Washington State group in all three phases right here. It's going to take me about five times as long to read this promo as it just took Wazoo to score two touchdowns. Kick off your week 11, Sunday NFL countdown. From Halle Berry to Obama, Drew Brees, Dak Prescott, Big Ben, the rest of the NFL QBs explain where some of the game's most creative audibles come from. Plus Patrick Mahomes and Jared Goff sit down to talk about the Monday night matchup between the 9-1 Chiefs and the 9-1 Rams. Sunday NFL countdown. Tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. What do you think? That was about 20 seconds or so. I'll give you my favorite. Audible. It just took them four seconds to score That's those it? two touchdowns. Okay. You know my favorite audible call. I want to hear. Used to do ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. What do you think that meant? Frozen. No play. I mean, that's the beauty of football, right? You just try to keep it as simple as possible. Ice cream, ice cream, everybody freeze. I'm not going to give you a play. And I'm going to dummy count or I'm going to hard count or I'm going to do anything I can to try to get you to jump off sides before we get to all the live action items. At the five-yard line this time, Peterson does make the catch. He lost the ball again. And Arizona gets it back. Is it cold? Sure. If a lot of these Wildcats never played in 28, 27 degree temperatures, absolutely. But I don't think that's the product of this. I think this is all about how hard Washington State is playing. And Kevin Sumlin knows it. He, he's watching this. The same thing that I'm watching from this booth. These Washington State guys are flying all over this football field. Offensively, defensively, kickoff coverage, punt coverage. Step faster than his Wildcats tonight. Khalil Tate on a roll across his body. Boy, that's a tough throw to make, and he did it to Devon Cooper. Let's check in with that net. There's J.J. Taylor bouncing for four. Thank you, Adnan. So Utah. Now might be in the driver's seat, Brock, to end up in the Pac-12 title game. Yeah, and to get to that game for the first time for Kyle Whittingham, quite an accomplishment when you lose your starting quarterback, Tyler Huntley. You lose your running back, Moss, to the knee injury. Both those guys lost for this season, and the rest of that team responding. Quite a testament to the group. Spinorama for Khalil Tate. Again across his body, flag down as he was looking for Poindexter. A couple of flags thrown. Yeah, that's a, an RPO, and Kevin knows what's coming. Men downfield. 
an eligible receiver downfield offense. Number 58. That probably will be declined. Third down. Yeah, so you get about that three-yard area down the field, and unfortunately, well, there's usually it's just like one guy. <laughs> You've got about four to choose from that have gone well down that three-yard threshold. Third down and five. Washington State shows blitz. They'll only rush three. Khalil Tate lost the snap. He's heading the wrong way. Oh Hooks a pass to nowhere. And I have to think that's going to be intentional grounding. It's an incomplete pass. He definitely threw it forward. And it is a zero hesitation intentional grounding flag that has dropped out. That ball didn't come anywhere near an eligible receiver or the line of scrimmage, even if they deem him to be outside the pocket. Intentional grounding. Offense number 14. Loss it down at the spot of the foul. Fourth down. And they're going to put that ball all the way back at the six-yard line. You know what that moment is? You know that commercial you want to get away? <laughs> <laughs> that ball gets stumbling and fumbling, and you got like four guys. But I'm just going to get away. Let me just Kareem Abdul-Jabbar hook past this thing and hope that it finds some green grass to land on. What a disastrous first half to play here from Arizona. They lost 25 on the grounding penalty. Kyle Sweet with a fair catch near midfield. 41-14 Washington State. And they'll be looking to add to it when we come back. We are back with a look at tonight's hardest working player brought to you by Duluth Trading Company. Can I make that plural? Can I put an S on that for these five big guys up front that have created such a pocket and so much time for Gardner? Andre Dillard, Liam Ryan, Frederick Mauingoa, Josh Watson, Abraham Lucas from left to right doing their job tonight, doing it in the run game. And you give Gardner Minshew that kind of space and that kind of time. He's going to keep putting up these silly video game numbers he has all season long. He leads the country in passing yards per game. And he is up now to 32 touchdown passes on the season, was sixth in the country in touchdown passes coming into tonight. Little play action fake here. And he'll dirt this one as the pocket started to collapse. Bob, the thing with that Wazoo offensive line is they have continuity and chemistry. I spoke to left guard Liam Ryan. He said they're just this great mix of guys. Some of them are kind of crazy and goofy. A couple others are a little more quiet, but they just come together and really complement each other's personalities. In fact, they're so tight that Gardner Minshew said when he started joining them for their Thursday night dinners, he kind of felt like the odd man out. He said everybody was so tight. I was like, I feel a little out of place here with these guys. That obviously has changed. Yeah, I think they've warmed up to him. <laughs> 566 pass attempts this season for Wazoo. They've allowed eight sacks. And he's buying even more time here. Now he'll scramble. And come very close to picking up a first down. It looks like they're going to spot him just past the sticks. It is a scramble for 11 yards for Minshew. Yeah, and he, and, benefits, and he benefits those guys. Sorry, Bob. But, you know, we saw it earlier with just that subtle movement, that stepping up in the pocket. But you just watch him. He doesn't run himself into trouble. Young quarterbacks will shuffle and they'll slide right into the lane of the left tackle or right tackle. But so much of his movement, as you watch it, is going to be right here between the tackles, stepping up and finding that space. Jet sweep to Calvin. And gets lassoed at the 40 yard line and brought down by Tony Fields. Yeah, that's a frustration tackle, I think, from Tony Fields right there. And then the guy that he finally outweighs by about 30 or 40 pounds. He's sick and tired of trying to cover all of this green grass. And Tony can run. The schooler next to him can run. We've hardly called their names. They're two really good linebackers. A tackling duo that's really second to none to anybody in this conference. But, man, when you are dropping back, when you're rushing, when you're trying to find these guys running all over the field, it wears you down. And shoot backpedaling. Fields comes late. He unloads to Borgi underneath. Borgi stays in bounds. Breaking tackles. First down. That is one 
freshman with some awfully strong legs and balance right there. Gave the Duluth trading partners hardest working guys. Look at this. Look at this O line. Look at Frederick bowing over right there. Look at the awareness in the eyes. Not just that there's receivers to do their job. And you're right. <laughs> the 10 yard line is about the only thing that could tackle these Cougars tonight. But a wonderful job up front with a little line stunt and a blitzing schooler there, the middle linebacker, to have your eyes up and to have the awareness up front to give Borgie that wide open lane to run through. This Washington State offense right now is on a pace to put up 700 yards. Swing pass to James Williams, and he's going to walk to the pylon for another Washington State touchdown. The selection committee staying up late. I know they saw some other teams today in the top 10 stumble out of the gate, even getting wins. This team did not stumble out of the gate today. They came to play. And they've got 48 on the board with 322 to go in the first half. Bob Shoes and Brock Ewart. Allison Williams here at Martin Stadium last week we saw this group go on the road and dominate a Colorado team that had started to play better football yeah. they had lost a few in a row but they felt like they were being more competitive they're playing against a team tonight that had won their last two games and really felt like they got Khalil Tate back healthy and maybe we're going to meet be a threat to teams down the stretch and this is an embarrassment so yeah. far for Arizona. Yeah, I mean, this is a clinic of using everybody on your play chart. I mean, that's what this is. It is everybody on this team. All your top eight receivers are going to get the ball. Your running backs are going to get it out of the backfield. Your offensive linemen are going to be empowered not just to constantly be pass blockers, but to go down and run the ball. This is a clinic in how to play offense in college football today and get a whole team involved in doing it. And as an analyst, as you're just watching this, it's a joy to watch. And well, they do it every week. They do. I mean, every single game they've played this season, they've had at least nine guys catch a pass from Gardner Minshew. They've already had 11 different receivers tonight. It must be so satisfying as a skill guy to put in the work all week and have the return on your investment be you're always involved. Yes. And, and I'll say this as well, as we got a chance, kind of a rare chance to have a night game tonight and just watch so much college football from the hotel today. And it just, it just resonates. Those teams and those cultures that love to play ball. And, it's, and Mike does it in his own unique ways as he's starting to sip his coffee. And you watch practice yesterday, and he's eccentric, and he's different. And the defense is done 15 minutes before the offense is. And they got shirts off in 25-degree weather. And Minshew's like in the locker room, constantly in his jock strap, having the time of his life. You like know, now. yeah, just playing games, <laughs> messing around, but having fun. And I know when you're 10 and one or nine and one, things tend to be more fun. But you just have felt that joy with this team all season long. Gary Brightwell gets sandwiched, but not before he picks up nine yards. Let's go to Adam. I see red people. I like that. Sean Brown maneuvers his way for a first down. And you know, it's sometimes hard to be a college football player, especially this time of year. Your body aches. It's getting colder. You got school. You got finals. But when you've got it going and you have a team that so enjoys playing the game together, you're having the time of your life, and that's what these kids are doing right now. Khalil Tate stays behind the line of scrimmage and is able to unload to Cedric Peterson. He is right at the line to gain. Maybe a half yard shot. Marcus Strong drove him back. Zone read. 
pop pass out to Brown. And he is right at the line to gain. Some punishment to pick up that half yard and get the first down. Jalen Thompson drove him out. I mean, has there been a tackle tonight where there's been just one Washington State defender on it? I mean, if there is, it's in one, it's on one hand. And that again, just reflective of these guys playing team ball and flying around and love all of their roles and their opportunities to just play this game. Khalil Tate this time well protected. Incomplete. Tony Ellison couldn't hold on. He was driven out again by Jalen Thompson. You know, and much like the offense on the other side, when you know you complement what they do, they don't show you the same look twice very often. It may be a very similar concept, but it's a different formation, it's a different motion, they're constantly changed. Same thing with this defense. They'll bring six, they'll drop eight in the coverage like that last time. They'll run different stunts. They're constantly on the move. Brightwell finds a lane. Pelour spins him down right at the first down marker. Coming up on a minute and a half to go in the first half, and that is good enough for an Arizona first down. I'll check that. They're going to mark him down. It looks like a half yard shy, and maybe a timeout taken before what will be third down and short. Looked like one official signaled first down. I honestly don't know if either team called timeout. I'm assuming someone did, but I didn't see an official signal that either team had called a timeout. And it is a timeout called by Arizona as we go back to Adnan. I'm all for it. I actually think that my lifestyle mirrors Mike Leach's lifestyle way more than Brock. I think I think I got way more in common with Mike Leach than Brock Hewitt does. You might talk football with him, but I talk culinary decisions. On a keeper on what is third down, Sean Brown is able to scoop up a low running throw from Khalil Tate. And that is officially a third down conversion for the Cats. Hunter Dale made the tackle. one down the sideline for Wolma and the tight end has it inside the five yard line. That was great timing and a tremendous catch there for Wolma. You can see him he comes out on a little wheel route he hesitates like he's going to block and you don't see many tight ends extend their hands with that kind of body control. He made 28 catches last season that's only his fourth this year. The fade route incomplete. Jalen Thompson, perfect coverage on Shun Brown. Just goes to show you how the tight end, yeah. before Kevin Sumlin arrives, plays a big role. The tight end not so much involved after a Kevin Sumlin system is installed. But there's no face guarding, remember that, in college football. It's a long, tough throw from Khalil Tate. You've got to get out of your hands so quickly, but a tremendous catch from Walmart to set up this opportunity. Incomplete. Poindexter got tied up at the goal line. Good coverage from Marcus Strong. Now it's third and goal. Strong's got it. Ara 
Arizona thinks that Brightwell may have broken the plane before the ball popped out. We're going to get another officials conference here. Field is a fumble recovery by the defense. Result to play is a touchback. First down, Washington State. Did Brightwell break the plane before the ball came loose? Everyone on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. A previous play is under review. Impossible to tell from that first look. Just can't see the football until it comes free. What a tremendous effort there from Jihad Woods, the weak side linebacker, the Robin to Peyton Palluer's Batman. Those two work in tandem so well. Some week ago in Colorado, do the same thing. That was McMillan that was stood up, and he's just ripping and tearing at the football. That again is just a well-coached group in Tracy Clay's defensive unit there. Come with you from those two looks that you got right there. Have to be indisputable that you can see the football break the plane before it is ripped out. And all of a sudden it just emerges yep. and Josh McCauley the center number 50 there is right in view. Yeah from the replays that we've seen I don't know how you would ever change the call that was made on the field. You know, this is feeling like you know, remember those years with Oregon and Chip Kelly when they were just rolling and their offense got all the credit in the world and deservedly so. After review, the ruling on the field of a fumble and a recovery by the defense stands as called. I think that's the right call. You just could not see anything that was indisputable. But those Oregon defenses, it was the offense put up all these silly yards, much like Minshew is doing this season in Leach. But you know what the defenses did? They sacked the quarterback. And you know what this group does? Number one sacking team in the league. This group is top 25 defensively in the country in yards. And even as this, more importantly, as the seasons evolve, they're starting to take the ball away. And if you can do that and just steal a possession or two, especially in the coming weeks against Washington in the Apple Cup next Friday night, and if they can get by them in the Pac-12 championship game, you become such a difficult team to contend with. And it's cold, but Washington State is not putting this ball in the freezer. They are going to try and score again before halftime. Off to a good start. Hurdle into midfield is the freshman Max Borgie. He picked up 30. Can you tell me how these kids are doing that? And they've got three timeouts. And he stays on his feet and runs. Demetrius Flanagan fouls, is wondering where he went. Here comes the blitz. One on one down the sideline. Minshew takes a shot. He's got Tay Martin. Touchdown. This is insane. He's unconscious. He's absolutely playing with house money. His partner and the rest of the guys are all at the table having the time of their lives. Five first half touchdown passes for the Heisman candidate. Better than half a hundred on the board with 10 seconds to go before halftime. Hey, Gardner, you've never seen the Big Apple? Get ready. I know you only brought like a suitcase and a box and you built your own furniture out here or something crazy I read in that story, but you may have to get a nice suit or maybe not. Maybe wear some cut off George. I don't know. Whatever you got going because you are just truly you're unconscious right now and the rest of your team is so feeding off it. Is there a chance he could put up enough numbers to not just get invited but to actually have a chance to win it. Look at him. <laughs> I think that guy in Tuscaloosa is having quite a year. I would say I, so. I, I think that those just become so gaudy and the team is so good. Will Greer had himself a day today too. He did and Kyler Murray at Oklahoma and we saw him and he's phenomenal. But I think everybody picked Oklahoma to win. Everybody picked Alabama to be there, and nobody, and I mean nobody, picked Wazoo to be doing what they're doing this season. 
Uncle Rico, man. Uncle Rico can't throw it the way <laughs> Minshew's throwing, I'll tell you that. They got a bunt to kick off. And Arizona will end up with the football at about their own 41 yard line with only five seconds to go in the half. 55 points. 407 yards of offense in the first half. The most since a 1997 win against Southwest Louisiana for Washington State. Yeah, and you know who the QB was back then. That was big old Ryan Leaf that was slinging it the same way. And I, I faced that crew in 97, and they won that Apple Cup and went to their first Rose Bowl in 65 years, and it was the same thing. Sean McWashington and Aaron Timms and Chris Jackson and Michael Black and all of those guys Jason McAdoo and they were just they were having a ball man I remember playing them thinking these guys are having so much fun. It feels like a lot of work for us and Get that ball rolling the way they do right now to me. It's not momentum. It is fun. It's energy It's a love for playing the game and it's been unstoppable Khalil Tate finds Cedric Peterson and that will take us to the halftime break. 55 on the board in the first 30 minutes for the Cougs. I think Leach is going to want to walk with me next week again. After that first half. <laughs> like I said, I, I still believe I've got more in common with him than you do, but you're right. <laughs> Unfortunately, we'll be on the other side of the country <laughs> next week. Arizona will start the third quarter. Well, you got to keep playing. You got to keep fighting. You can't go in, out there and lay down in the second half. Yeah, and I think for Kevin here, you're also playing for next week. Next week, a bowl game in that Territorial Cup with ASU, and you've just got to put together a whole lot better 30 minutes in the second half than you did the first. Khalil Tate with a high throw. Missed Devon Cooper, and that could have been intercepted. And when Kevin Semlin says to Allison, execution, that's it. That's, a, that's an RPO with a little slant route that Khalil and crew have run probably a thousand times since the start of spring football implementing Noel Mazzoni's system. And that's the very basic of execution that you talk about at halftime and you'd sure love to see get done on first down. J.J. Taylor turns the corner, gets down the sideline and has a first down. Having said that though, Brock, it's not all just execution. It's not. When you're losing 55 to 14 and a half, the other team's playing harder than you, no and they question. want it more than you. And we'll see as Logan Tago is down and injured after that last play. We'll see if Arizona's got some pride and if they're going to play with some effort in the second half that they just didn't have in the first half. Yeah, and the fact that first half, J.J. Taylor, who has been such a force here, for Kevin Sumlin and crew, just nine carries and 14 yards in that first half of play. As Tago is able to walk off on his own power, and that's a good sign as Logan has played such good football here over the last three weeks. And you're right, that's not on any stat sheet, right? We, we can see all the yards, completions, but what you just do not see are hustle points. What you don't see is pursuit and effort. What you don't see is just which team is playing harder, longer in the first 30 minutes. It wasn't even a question. There's an Arizona team that three weeks ago beat a team in Oregon that has been ranked this year 44 to 15. As Taylor is able to pick up four. They've won back to back games. Yep. This Arizona group. And really, the stumble that they had in the midpoint of the season as Taylor goes up the middle for a couple of more they would attribute to Khalil Tate's injury. Mm. Well, he's healthy now. I mean, he is as healthy by their own admission. He is as healthy now as he has been at any point since the start of the season, and they are getting whooped 55 to 14. Blitz comes from Washington State and flushes Tate out. Sidearms one down the sideline and drops it into Devon Cooper. Oh, was that a special throw from Khalil oh, Tate? Man, yeah, last time I've seen a college quarterback make that throw was actually the guy that's going to be playing Monday night, Patrick Mahomes. On a dead sprint to his left, look at that. Four more Cougars chasing him down and back across his body. He throws an absolute seed. 45 yards in the air to Devon. Running to his left. That's big time. 
First and goal. Wide receiver hitch. Shun Brown. And is able to get inside the five yard line. And he will go out of bounds near the three. It'll be second down and goal. And to me, this is you got to get Tate on the move here. Uh, a player of his athleticism has not had a rushing touchdown since, since September. It's hard to fathom. And I know part of that is injury, but he's got to be active with his legs. They'll give it to J.J. Taylor here. And a jump cut for a yard. Third down and goal. Carson Block was there to make the tackle for Wazoo. some more time fires for Shun Brown in the end zone and that's a touchdown he flashed the arm strength on that drive and they're gonna leave the offense on the field it looks like to go for two now check that they're bringing the offense off they will kick the point yeah there is no question about the physical skill set here at Khalil Tate it was a dead run to his left firing it back across the field that time scrambling to his right and you can see Hunter Dale he tries to catch up to that fastball not capable of doing it and you know, those are the plays those are the drives those are two possessions where he makes what four plays on two touchdown drives as good as anybody you're going to see in college football so Arizona does come out to start off the third quarter and shows some pride a touchdown drive led by Khalil Tate You've got some offensive scientists at Andy Reid and Sean McVay. What have they concocted? First and third and touchdowns. Number one and number two with the quarterbacks in terms of yards thrown. A couple of running backs that aren't too bad either. Both offenses have big play wide receivers in Cooks and Hill. And what they will produce when the Chiefs and Rams meet in L.A. on Monday night is anyone's guess. Monday night football. And we can't wait to watch that one. Harris near the goal line. Trips up. And they have tripped themselves up at about the 25. And guys, that Monday night football game taking place in L.A., that city has been through so much from the shooting at Thousand Oaks to the devastating wildfires. In fact, the team has dedicated the game to the city and are donating thousands of tickets to first responders and victims. I spoke with offensive lineman Andrew Whitworth. He said, I just feel like it's an opportunity to recognize the firefighters, first responders of L.A., and let them know how thankful we are for them and just really wrap our arms around the victims of Thousand Oaks. He said, it's been so difficult here lately but it's not about the game on Monday it's about the opportunity to come together and we hope everyone will join us and join our love to LA and all our best thoughts and prayers as well to everyone not only in Southern California but Northern California as well as Gardner Minshew gets to the sideline and he will throw one away as Kylan Wilborn was in pursuit I'll tell you what both of those teams are doing as well as you look at all of those weapons in a copycat league and you know it Bob because you've called games for 17 plus years. You're going to have everybody trying to take what they're doing from a personnel standpoint from a scheme standpoint and it's no different here with Mike Leach and all of his disciples all over college football and I guarantee you there are young coaches and young coordinators all over who are going to watch this game tape of how do you score 55 points and throw five touchdowns in running these same plays that you have been running for decades. False start is going to be called against Wazoo. False start, offense, number 65, five-yard penalty, still second down. Well, I thought it was fun talking to Mike Leach yesterday, and I asked him, what do you think is the most misunderstood thing still to this day about your air raid system? And he said, well, you're going to get those old kind of grizzled football guys. They're going to turn their nose up at the way we spread people out and the way we play. He said, go watch the Super Bowl. Watch the Patriots and Eagles last year. It was the air raid Super Bowl. Yep. Both teams did and are doing what we do. So this system has DNA now in the NFL, and why not? 
If you can, and we see it even at times, we talked about a game we called earlier this season, how teams are copycatting Sean McVay and the Rams. Yep. Those bunch sets and exploding into space. And now you see those bunch sets and all different types of route trees out of them all over the place in the NFL and in college as well. No question. That was a Utah game. Right in the conversation with their OC, Troy Taylor, saying, yeah, I studied that stuff all summer. And there's high school programs in this state. There's tons of high school programs all over Texas running these same plays where the kids are watching going, oh, I know that play. I know that's 92, or that's Mesh, or that's Verts. It's not overly complicated in its route schemes. Three-man rush on third and 15. Minshew dodging sacks, and now he goes down. And they're going to say he was down. As the ball popped out, he loses a few yards back to the 16. A seven-yard sack as Jalen Harris and Colin Schooler both eventually well, got home. That's the best four minutes that Arizona's played in this entire football game. You come out of halftime, you march down the field, Khalil makes a couple phenomenal plays, and there are three and out. Aided by a little misfire, Gardner, on that little shallow cross to, to Calvin in, in a very rare sack. What, just their ninth sack now, and this is their tenth ball game. Only the second punt for Oscar Trigisovic. And he angles one to the sideline. And that is not a field position changing punt here. As we'll see where the officials will say that Arizona will start. They're going to start just into Washington State territory at the Cougar 48 yard line as we take a look at this week's college football playoff rankings. Brought to you by Goodyear. Nothing but W's through the top seven until you get down to West Virginia as they lost a shocker in Stillwater, a game they led by 17. Yep. Quite a testament to, to Coach Gundy and his crew there to not give up. Michigan started a little bit slow. Alabama. Oh, really? I didn't realize that. <laughs> when did Nick say that? Play action. Tate on a rollout. High throw incomplete. Stanley Berryhill, the intended receiver. Yeah, we've not had that weekend that we've had the last few years where it just turns the top 10 upside down. We really yet to see that. Notre Dame, I, I thought, had their most impressive win of the season. I was anxious to watch that. It's a, a very hot Syracuse team. Syracuse team that took Clemson to the wire and just got the doors blown off in Yankee Stadium today. Tough when you lose your quarterback. Same way Boston College lost their quarterback in the home game against Clemson. Had no answers offensively. Syracuse lost their quarterback. And Eric Dungy early in the game and had no answers offensively for Notre Dame as J.J. Taylor picks up four. It'll be third down. You know at what six. I say to that, though, Bob? You put yourself in that position. And in those systems, especially in Syracuse. And, and unfortunately for Dungy, who's taken so much contact through the years. As you want to run and you want to run between the tackles as a quarterback, you better protect yourself. Cougs show blitz, and now they back off. They'll rush three on third down. Khalil Tate, the pocket. Again across his body. Incomplete for Barry Hill. Good coverage underneath by Marcus Strong. And now it's fourth down and six. In plus territory, down 55 to 21. And here comes the punt group. Yeah, I would have run, I think, that last third and six run play. QB drive would have done something. Because to me, this has got to be you cross the 50, four down territory. I would think so too. You're down 55 to 21, starting in plus territory, and you're now going to punt. And the punt barely gets inside the 20 yard line. <laughs> ESPN College Football, brought to you by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. What do you love the most about this? Uh, just, just the people, the whole, hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? The whole variety of people and personalities you get to deal with, and everybody's, you know, working together to achieve something, and... Um, you know, I, I think just the whole team aspect where everybody's uh, on board pulling the rope. Yeah, 
That was a fun little walk I had with Coach Leach yesterday from his home, a walk that he does quite often, 3.1 miles here to the facility, and it's a unique place. Having competed against Washington State, watched him for years and years. This is, as he told me yesterday, the epitome of a college town, pretty unique in this conference. And not just the team pulling together on the field, but this entire community has just so embraced him. James Williams. The 22-yard line picked up four. And not even him. He wouldn't say that. Because he, he is just... It's not about him. It's about everybody else and just so embrace this entire team and everything that they've gotten going here in 2018. And she off play action. Tay Martin incomplete. It'll be third down and six. I'll tell you one thing, though. Uh, a three and out on the previous drive, a, a bit of a misfire. That one also a little bit low. They go three and out here, and I will not be surprised to see that guy, that pirate on the sideline, bring that offensive group together. We saw it a couple times in Boulder last week because it's a real point of emphasis, not just for this game, but for next Friday and the possibility of a championship game and the possibility of a Rose Bowl to never step off the gas. One on one down the sideline. Tay Martin lost it. Did he get underneath it? He thinks he's got the catch. One official said incomplete. Now they rule it a catch. And it is a first down. What a catch from Martin. Yeah, I think that went from the, the ribs to the knees to the thigh pad. And I don't think it ever hits the turf. And what an incredible job fighting through a face mask coming back to the football. And I, yeah, it no never doubt. hits turf. Not even close. Great concentration from Tay Martin. 351 yards passing now for Minshew. They'll set up the screen. And that's bottled up right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and that 351 now puts him ahead of Luke Falk for his 11th 300 yard game and 11 tries. It may be on his way to his sixth 400 yard game of the season. Colin Schooler. Let me ask you this. When this offense gets rolling the way it is, design a defense for me that can stop it. You have Do to. I need bump and run corners? Do I need great awareness in zone? I mean, what what characteristics does a defense have to have to slow this offense down? I think that's a great question. And I think the latter is so much more important. Of having an awareness. I'm just watching the Wildcats. I was showing you during the break a number of times, you know, on our replay booth up here that we have, that you're just covering grass. You're just covering turf. You're just running into zones without any awareness of what the offensive players are doing. And you put on the Cal Bears defense tape. We're in here a, a month ago and really held this group down. It is a route awareness. It's an understanding. It's passing routes off. It's playing zone coverage. But understanding there have to be man principles lock up on these route concepts. Here's a three-man rush again. So you're dropping eight to try and cover five. And this time they do a very good job of giving Martin an underneath crossing route for a yard. I mean, to me, that is the perfect way to play zone and bottle up a dangerous receiver. And we saw Colorado, and just about everybody tries to do that. And at times you do have to mix that in. There's no question of just keeping everything in front of you. But what Washington has done, what Cal did a week ago, and really what the Huskies have done in their D coordinator, Jimmy Lake, who I'm sure is watching this game tonight. They have been able to mix and match their coverages differently pre and post snap and being able to have such an awareness to so many of these different concepts. Minshew well protected and there's Martin again. First down to the 11-yard line. Another third down conversion, and they pick up 21. But in that Apple Cup matchup with Luke Falk the last three or four years, the Huskies have also been able to rush three and get home and to at least impact that pocket, and that will be the challenge this year. Well, when they had Vita Vea, 
I mean, you can Elijah you can send, Qualls. Yes. yes, you could send a monster after a couple of guys on the offensive line and have a belief you're going to get to the quarterback. Yeah, but there's really been no group in this conference this season that's been able to do that. To rush three, and as Kevin Sumlin told Allison, to get this guy off of his spot. Max Borgie. He runs hard, doesn't he? Oh. Never seems like the first guy is able to bring him down as he gets to the six yard line. And mark my words, this kid in two years, when he further develops, he is just a true freshman. And he gets a chance to lift and do everything in an offseason and put another five to ten pounds of weight on him. But Christian McCaffrey, I think comparisons are fairly real. Minshew out to Williams and he loses yards back to the 10. Nice job one on one in the open field by Colin Schooler to get the tackle for loss. And I think this is the other area next Friday in that matchup with the Huskies that the game will probably be decided by because I think Washington State will move the ball between the 20s. But when you get that 12th defender when that space gets more constricted in the red zone and things get harder. Can you find touchdowns? They've scored them at a big, about an 80% clip, which is just astounding for 50-plus possessions in the red zone. But this is the area against the elite competition. Washington's, the Utah's, who knows? Possible playoff matchup as well that you've got to find sevens. The Cougs can get a first down inside the two-yard line. Minshew is looking end zone instead. Incomplete. Martin had two hands on it. But Azizi Hearn didn't quit in coverage. Now it's fourth down from the 10 yard line. Martin made the phenomenal play using just about every body part earlier in this one. Just the ground. I think the force of the ground right there knocks it out. So Blake Mazza, who came to Washington State as a walk on after a redshirt year at Arkansas. Now comes out for a 27 yarder. And he missed it. Low snap may have thrown the timing off a bit. The kicker not happy as he misses from short range. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. Only three possessions tonight where Washington State has come away empty. They've got a 55-21 lead as we take a look at tonight's player spotlight brought to you by T. Rowe Price. And this is a spotlight that you travel all the way from the Palouse to New York City. As Gardner Minshew keeps on piling up Brock's statistical numbers that should have him at the Heisman ceremony. Yeah, and I know we've commented on this a bunch, but this is to me the really cool part. Is it just not one or two or three or four guys? It is just getting everybody involved. And when the system is really rolling all over the, all over college football, and you see, you know, his coaching tree, his branches extend a lot of places. The best of them do just that in their distribution to everybody. J.J. Taylor stood up a yard shy of a first down by Dominic Sibbles. It'll be third down and one for Arizona. Now he told Allison going into halftime he wants to, to keep it going and he's not going to be happy about a three and out and, and an empty possession because in Mike Leach's mind it's not just about these final 19 minutes it's making sure that trajectory and that team is poised to do something and he's yet to find a team do as a head coach and that's win an outright league championship and have his chance to win the North Division on Friday and see even more right up the middle first down run for J.J. Taylor. JJ Taylor, You think about where this Washington State program was not that many years ago. And they are 9 and 1 on their way to 10 and 1 for the first time since 1997. A year where they went to the Rose Bowl. Bowl eligible for the fourth consecutive year. That's a program record. Highest ranking in the college football playoff era already. Gary Brightwell with a three yard carry here and all of those are numbers that should approve for Washington State considering how they're playing and if they can find a way to win the Apple Cup they're on their way 
to a conference championship game. Yep. And who knows what chaos could still happen in front of them. You never know. You know, and it's not as if you look at this defense, or really, frankly, this offense right now, and say, oh, there's a first rounder, there's a second rounder, there's a third rounder. They're just doing it with all of this incredible NFL talent. Brightwell lost it, and they will say that was a forward pass. They're doing it with players from 18 states and three countries on this roster. They're doing it with guys, and I promise you, I mean, shoot the defensive line. And you look at these guys, and we talked about Taylor Comfort earlier, and they've already got a new wave in, and they're back up D-line, and none of these guys are on Alabama's 3-D. None of them. None of them. None of them. And yet they're 10-1, and one, and they should be the number seven team in the country come Tuesday night because they know how to play their role and put them in just the right spot to fit their skill set. And they'll bring a blitz on third down. And Chase Khalil Tate, he's going to go deep. Devon Cooper, he holds on to the football. It looked like the officials, looking back and forth, both wanted to make sure that they thought Devon Cooper had complete control, and it is ruled a 39-yard catch. Well, this is the one thing we've seen now just about a half dozen times that when Khalil Tate gets out of the pocket, and I think that's the right call. His eyes are one place. They're not looking to scramble anymore. His eyes are one place, and that is the furthest Wildcat down the field that he can chuck it to and make something happen with a big chunk explosive play. And then Shun Brown picked up eight on first down. Pop pass to Brown again to the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal. And I'll say this about Khalil is every wide receiver that I ever played with. I think I heard the Hasselback brothers say this when they did the Thursday night game as well. Every wide receiver I ever played with said one thing. Just give me a chance. Just throw me the ball, man. I'll make, I'll make something happen for you. Just give me an opportunity. And Mr. Tate does just that down the field. There is no question about that. Fakes the screen and instead wide open. In the back of the end zone is Poindexter. A blown coverage by the Cougars. And Tate airmailed a wide open target. Yeah, he sure did. And, you know, he's been scrambling and running around. And you're going to see Poindexter here just get lost in the back end zone. And he even sticks the hand up. And that one just unfortunately airmails. He's made a lot more difficult throws than that one tonight. And Poindexter, the former volleyball player, it's a hard one to miss in the back of the end zone. J.J. Taylor lost it, picked it back up, and he's got nowhere to go. At the mesh point with he and Khalil Tate, they drop the football, and they lose four yards. Dominic Sibbles was all over J.J. Taylor to help bring him down. Now it's third down and goal, but back to the 14-yard line. Clock under 10. Another blitz. It's picked up. Tate out of the pocket. Looking in zone. Touchdown. He finds Poindexter this time. The second touchdown this quarter for Arizona with a minute two to go. That's a really nice route by Poindexter down the field. Again, it's just the scramble drill. And that now is, I think, the sixth time you're breaking contain. And those wide receivers deep down the field or that time, Poindexter breaking his route off. Double-ditch touchdowns from Mr. Poindexter on the season now with two tonight. On two catches, so he keeps that streak alive. Scored a touchdown on his last six consecutive receptions. Fifty five twenty eight with one oh two to go in the third. And that's hard four to do. touchdown passes now for Tate. That's really that is really hard to do. I, I would think that's good. Got to be approaching some kind of record right there. <laughs> I don't know what the college football version of the DiMaggio hitting streak is, but 
touchdown catches on six straight receptions. That's one to look up. Yeah, and you're seeing just some of the talent that Mr. Tate has. And, well, what are we at now? About 25 degrees outside? I think that's about right. None of those guys look comfortable. Yeah, this guy right here, yeah. he's, he's just being. That's right. He is absolutely regretting his decision. <laughs> yes. He is surrounded by the rest of them. He can't put the shirt back on because then he's the weakling. Yeah. And but he's the he only one with gloves, too. Praying that someone else <laughs> is going to be the first to put a shirt back on <laughs> because he is. He knows he made the wrong decision. <laughs> A booming kickoff through the back of the end zone. Who will be the first guy to break? <laughs> this is the I've got no choice but to do every I can't dance move just to try and stay warm. Is that the old Goonies truffle shuffle? <laughs> Oh, yeah, here we go. We get more. <laughs> Peer pressure. Just say no. <laughs> okay. We have the little guys waving to their parents. What am I doing over here? First and 10 of the 25 for Gardner Minshew. Washington State has been held scoreless so far in this quarter. And he's got a pitch and catch with Travell Harris for a first down. Gain of 12. Oh, and he is waffled by Derek Bowles after a gain of only one. I'll tell you, I think the coolest story that I'd heard over the last 24 hours or so about Mr. Minshew, and we've documented, I think, his football over the course of these three quarters pretty well. But about every, every Wednesday, Coach Leach has for the younger players about a 60 play scrimmage, live scrimmage after practice for the young guys. And there was one veteran that stayed out. To cheer everybody on and cheer all those young guys on, and you can guess who it was. It was number one six. Short of the first down is Winston, as he was stood up by Lorenzo Burns, picked up four. But that's a great story. I don't know. Do any other teams that you've come across have that Wednesday afternoon? All the guys that aren't going to play scrimmage is that a common yeah, thing? Yeah, Bill Snyder will do it. You'll see some some programs do it. And again, I think some of the Leach disciples will do that. But you don't see many Heisman contenders, many guys leading the country in passing that care just as much about the freshmen as they do about all the guys that he gets to throw to and make plays all over this field. On the age of social media, instantaneous notification, yes, you guys were on TV. <laughs> and everybody that they know is giving them a call <laughs> saying, mission accomplished. They put you on television. Here's third down for Washington State to start the fourth quarter. Side on throw, looking for sweet and looking for a flag. And there is a flag on the far side of the field as Troy Young was guarding Kyle Sweet on the near side. But away from the play on the far side, there is a marker down. Bob Schusen, Brock Ewart, Allison Williams here in Pullman. 55 on the board for Wazoo in the first half. And they failed to put any points on the board in the third quarter. There's no foul for holding the play. The play was legal. So now the flag is picked up, and it will be a fourth down and five for Washington State. And for some reason, Gardner Minshew is staying on the field. I can't imagine that Mike Leach with a 55-28 lead is going to go for it on his side of the 50. And yes, indeed, here comes the punt group. No, but I also can't imagine down 14-0 in just the second half here that he's too pleased. So Dragicevic will punt it away from about his own 30-yard line. 
Sean Brown in traffic. Lost the football. Well, that's a return man trying to make a play down big early fourth quarter. And rather than call for a fair catch, he makes the catch in traffic, coughs it up. And Washington State has the recovery as Jihad Woods found the ball at the bottom of the pile. That Jihad Woods, whether he's ripping the ball out, whether he is finding the ball, there are just certain guys that are all over it. And I think that comment's exactly right. I don't think this is a matter of I'm trying too hard. I think it's just a matter of doing too much. I really hate that. Oh, this guy's trying. No, everybody is trying too hard. And everybody's trying to do their very best. But that's simply an occasion there where just call for the fair catch. Put yourself in harm's way. That's the fourth giveaway for Arizona. Borgie on a draw play. Out of the 15 yard line, he picks up seven. And you can see Washington State scored touchdowns on all three of the previous Wildcat giveaways. And I wouldn't mind here if I'm Gardner Minshew and I'm Mike Leach, and you want to change a little bit of the mindset of the second half, I would not mind committing to running that football, especially if that box count and those numbers are anywhere near your favor. Swings one to Borgie here, and that was red. Colin Schooler was also jumping along with P.J. Johnson. And the group is growing. Word gets around, you might get on television and more guys show up. And we know how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> Third down and three at the 15 yard line. They'll try and run for it with Williams. And Brock, there is that favorable box count. Yeah. Why not run at favorable numbers? And that is exactly what Gardner Minshew checked to there. Yeah, and I would not be afraid to do that every time here. You know, a, you're going to accomplish some more of this, continue to take time off the clock. B, you're going to fill up those stands with more shirtless kids <laughs> whose moms and grandmas somewhere are like, well, will you please put some clothes on? But C, I think also just a mindset to show that if you're going to play five in the box, this group up front is good enough to run it. Here's Borgie. He gets hit hard at about the five yard line. Max Borgie, number 21, the ball carrier. Scotty Young, earlier in the game, may have gotten away with a crown of the helmet targeting. And this time he comes in with the crown of the helmet for the second time in the game. They said he, I guess, delivered enough of a glancing blow to not be called for targeting in the first half. And let's see if the replay booth will indeed initiate another targeting call, and they the will. Previous plays yeah, that young man has just got to targeting. get his eyes up. This is in. This is this rule is for you, Scotty. This is protecting you from yourself. Only bad things happen when you come in with the crown of your helmet. You have just got to hit with your eyes up. The whole point of the rule is so that players will stop doing that. It's dangerous for the player getting hit and dangerous for the player doing the hitting. And maybe Scotty Young will learn. We'll find out when we come back. The replay booth initiated a targeting review. It was held up while we were away. And Scotty Young has been ejected for using the crown of the helmet with that contact on the tackle on Max Borgie. And I think you said it perfectly, Bob. You're just trying to protect both that runner, and he's not defenseless. He's a runner. So it is all about the forcible contact with the crown of the helmet. And just as much, you're protecting that defensive player. Get your head out of that play. Get your eyes up. Scotty got away with it the first time, not on that occasion. So it's half the distance to the goal, and first and goal for Washington State. And Wazoo was set to run a play, but there was a presentation at the far end of the field 
still being announced by the public address so the officials had to stop playing until the field was cleared. Now we're ready to go at the three yard line. Minshew a bullet right at the goal line caught for a touchdown. Jameer Calvin with the sixth touchdown reception by receivers tonight of passes thrown by Gardner Minshew. So Minshew ties a school record here at Washington State. Six touchdown passes on the night. The last player to do it was Luke Falk last year against Oregon State. A really nice job there by Calvin of knowing contact was coming. Just like on a post up, you don't have to be the biggest of wide receivers, and Calvin isn't, but you can still use your body to shield out those defenders. 62 points on the board for Washington State, and the first points that they have scored in the second half, believe it or not. So you asked me earlier, and as we get ready to kind of preview this Apple Cup on Friday, how do you defend this group? You need lockdown corners. Obviously, you want pass rush. But most importantly here, you've got three on two. So these three guys in zone coverage have got to defend these two guys. And you just watch this just breakdown. You're just covering, you're just covering turf. You're just covering turf. You have no concept of the route that's coming right here until it's too late. And you will see elite groups. You'll see a Nick Saban group. You'll see a Dave Aranda at LSU. You'll see Jimmy Lake at Washington next week is they rep these red zone routes and when you get down there you're not just running the zone coverage understand the concept of what they're trying to do with their splits so you can get on that route quicker so you can jump that route and certainly make that picture much much harder for Gardner Minshew but we talk about this all the time on the road as we're watching tape Bob those defenses in college football that actually route pattern read and route recognize and even in zone coverage, start to cover people versus those that just simply run coverages. You run coverages, you're going to get eaten up by this group. Gary Brightwell. Tripped up just shy of the 30-yard line. Guys, we've seen Gardner Minshew carve up defenses. Well, he's pretty handy with woodworking as well. He can also carve it up there. He's made furniture. He made a bar when he was at ECU, some Christmas gifts. He actually had a whole woodworking shop at ECU. It's something he got into through his dad, who's very handy. So one year he asked for a set of tools for his birthday. But that hobby, as you can imagine, has taken a bit of a pexy since he came here to the Palouse, especially when you consider all he brought was a suitcase and a couple boxes, but he's pretty handy. So let's start adding up all the things Gardner Minshew can do that I can't do. Okay. J.J. Taylor. Dodging tacklers. He picks up 14. It's a long list. No, he can grow a sweet stash. I can't do that. He can throw six touchdown passes. Yeah, I can't throw one. He can build a bar. No chance. He can walk on water. He can build anything. <laughs> he can do a setup. Yeah, that's, <laughs> keep, keep doing the, just keep adding to the list. Allison, that was a nice. <laughs> you know what that is? The definition of the truth hurts. Misdirection for Tate. Tries a little dead leg to the sideline, and Wazoo wasn't biting. Chased down by Justice Rogers. <laughs> So it's a loss back to the 38 yard line. Second and 14. Yeah, Mr. Tate, and Mr. Sumlin, and Carew can, you know, they've got to utilize this experience. And say in the years to come, this is what we want to be. We want to be like these guys we're playing against on the other side. You've got to get to a point where Mike Leach is here in year number seven where we can build a team that could be a whole lot more competitive than the group playing this one tonight. Taylor brought down by Carson Block, third and 11. Oh, and at Carson Block, what did you call these guys, misfits? It's like the island of misfit toys, you know, if you grew up watching Rudolph. And Carson went from Louisiana Lafayette to Saddleback College to Washington State, like so many of these guys have on their different journeys and paths, and he's not prototypical in any way, but he just fits really well in this scheme it's a whole lot more about effort and want to on that defensive line than it is about any brute power or strength. Only a two man rush with a spot and Tate still has nowhere to go. 
Will Rogers acted as the spy and was waiting for Khalil Tate. It'll be a punt. Yeah, I think that look on Khalil Tate's face kind of shows that he knows it. He could feel that just two-man rush. And that's a that's a defensive tackle in Will Rogers. It just had his eyes locked in on Tate and nowhere to run. Fair catch for Travell Harris at the 25 yard line of Washington State. Cougars with the football and a big lead when we come back. The college football playoff top 25 ranking show Tuesday at 7 on ESPN. ESPN College Football is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And in part by Buick. Turn Black Friday into Buick Friday with a fresh new lineup that's full of surprises. There are plenty of signs tonight for Gardner Minshew. He is having a blast. And how about the sign turnout at game day? Mm. When they were here a few weeks ago for the first ever time in Pullman. Boy, did the, the Coog faithful show up. And it was a sea of some of the best signs that you're going to see. And it just has organically happened. The magic mustache patrol is at every game. As here is Minshew back to work. He finds Kyle Sweet. And Sweet out mm -hmm. close to the 40 yard line. And I would think this is probably the last possession here for Minshew and a lot of these number ones. Chance for him to get a seventh touchdown pass. I think just continue to add to numbers. We said it last week in Boulder. Felt like he had a Heisman moment. Felt like he really made and, and made his case and statement. I think this team has in this overall effort to that committee that hopefully is still awake watching, but this kid has got to find a way. He's one of the five best players in college football, period. I, I just don't think there's any debate about that. A former walk on at Troy is one of the five best players in college football. Yeah, former walk on at Troy that then had to go to junior college, that then had to go to East Carolina, that had to get benches, a captain on that team, and had a little realization that I'm just done trying too hard. I'm done worrying about others, and I'm just going to go out there and absolutely cut it loose. Harrington. Short of the first down. I mean, this is a year you just don't have some of the running backs we've had in college football the last few years. Tua is absolutely leading the charge. Kyler Murray's offense, we saw them as just silly. Will Greer played tremendous today, nearly willed his team back and had an incredible opportunity in the final play of the game. Had an awesome season. Gardner Minshew and I would put Mackenzie Milton, who hasn't lost a game in two years. Quarterback down at UCF. Those are my five guys, all quarterbacks that to me have really distinguished themselves in college football. Harrington. First down. Don't tell me Butch is trying to go shirtless. Well, the trendsetters up in the stands are trying to get Butch to join the group. <laughs> First and 10 for Washington State at the 47 yard line. Minchu extends the play and throws it away. Did he get the ball back to the line of scrimmage? I'm not sure if that ball got to the 47 yard line. If it's intentional grounding, he would lose about five yards. He's making the case. I don't think it does. And the officials are going to give him the benefit of the doubt that the ball did get back to the line of scrimmage. You know, we saw a moment ago pop up on the screen. Patrick Mahomes, we'll see him Monday Night Football. The two 9 and 1 teams, the Chiefs and the Rams. And I'm wondering now, are we finally getting to the point, and maybe Gardner Minshew will be the next beneficiary of this, as he's got second down and 10. There comes a blitz. 
And he's going to throw one down the rail again. Another leaping completion. Calvin Jackson hauls it in. At the 10 yard line, it's first and goal. 37 more yards for Gardner, Gardner Minshew. Minshew. Number 85, Calvin Jackson Jr. And the second time we saw Tay Martin come back for a ball. Look at that. I mean, you just, you just can't do it any better than that. Yes, your quarterback gets you an opportunity. It was Tay Martin earlier that had an unbelievable top 10 kind of catch. And that time, Calvin Jackson, the junior college transfer, you know, getting his opportunity. Going up and making a tremendous play for his quarterback. And the answer to your questions are yes. Yeah, are these air raid quarterbacks going to get their chance? Yes. Did Baker Mayfield go number one overall? Absolutely. Minshew looking for touchdown pass number seven. And he's got it to Aesop Winston. And there's your record. The most touchdown passes ever thrown in a single game by a Wazoo quarterback. I think there was always a prejudice, Brock. Yes. From an NFL standpoint, that these guys are system quarterbacks, and it's not a system that would work in the NFL. And some of these air raid quarterbacks in years past didn't get a chance. But now you're seeing that DNA in the league, and that guy's going to get a chance, I would think, to play in the league. We are back. Gardner Minshew as our king of the moment, brought to you by Burger King. He's had seven moments tonight, many more than that. Bobby's 43 and 55 for 473 and seven touchdowns. Seven touchdowns. Yeah. To six different receivers. Calvin Jackson is the only receiver that has found the end zone more than once, so. That theme of continuing to spread the wealth. And a fair catch made by J.J. Taylor at the one-yard line. So that brings it out to the 25-yard line. <laughs> the club is growing. There have to be some unhappy parents down there somewhere that know they're going to have sick kids on their hands. Rhett Rodriguez takes over at quarterback for Khalil Tate with 7.06 to go. Darius Smith. A gain of one. I mean, I know. What, what do they call this? <laughs> Pac-12 after dark? Well after dark. <laughs> I mean, this is it's getting a little out of hand. Well, it was out of hand at halftime with 55 on the board for Washington State. And the club is growing. Harry <laughs> Smith, stiff arm. Turns the corner, and he's got a first down. Cut down by Skylar Thomas. Smith dragged down behind the line. Coming up next at Sports Center with Zubin and John Anderson. They'll break down today's games and how they'll affect the college football playoff rankings, plus LeBron's reaction to the Lakers' recent surge. An inside look at the Warriors' offense without Steph. It's been tough in Golden State. It's Sports Center next, right here on ESPN and the ESPN app. Cole Dubox with that last tackle for loss for Washington State. It's at second and 13. Play action for Rodriguez. He's being chased and has to throw it away. A 
at the feet of Darius Smith. Namdi Aguayo was in pursuit. Well, I sure hope this committee does more than just simply look at the score. But the reality is, I know it's late. And, and the score should say enough, but I'll be pretty disappointed come Tuesday. And that committee comes out and the rankings come out. And if this is not the seventh best team in college football. Rodriguez quarterback run and that'll be a face mask. Pretty obvious. Flags came in from everywhere. Quarterback is Brad Rodriguez. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 58, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Now they got the number wrong. That's Nandi Aguayo. Not 58, but number 30. That is guilty of the face mask, so that will put the ball out at the 50 yard line. Smith picks up four yards and Brock speaking of where will Wazoo end up in the exclusive reveal of the next college football playoff top 25 we'll have it for you 7 Eastern coming up on Tuesday on ESPN Reese and the guys will break it all down a live interview with new committee chairman Rob Mullins you can always watch it live on the ESPN app from anywhere and only a 1.4 percent chance from our FBI given to Washington State to make the college football play. Darius Smith running hard for a first down. Yeah, and a couple years ago when Washington made it out of this conference, you know, with the loss, but conference champion, they didn't have Notre Dame to contend with. And, and Notre Dame is going to have a USC team that got beat by a 2-8 and eight UCLA crew today. More than likely does not have a conference, obviously, championship game is going to run the table. And Alabama, Georgia, and Oklahoma that's ahead of them. A Michigan, that, you know, if they beat Ohio State, will have Northwestern. I mean, it is just, you know, I think those odds are about right. Hard to imagine. Batted ball at the line. No, they need chaos. They need a USC upset of a Notre Dame. They need an Ohio State upset of Michigan and maybe Ohio State looked just unimpressive enough today that if you are Wazoo and you beat a Washington in the Apple Cup you win a playoff game in your own conference that maybe you hold off an Ohio State team even if they're able to beat Michigan yeah. but all of those dominoes have to fall yeah. the right way for them to have a chance and I don't think Gardner really cares I said that to you yesterday or last week. I don't think Mike Leach even knows who the seven teams are ahead of him. I really don't think they care at all. They would just sure love to beat at Washington for the first time in a while for Coach Leach and get to that Pac-12 championship game where I think they'll more than likely be favored, whether it's ASU or, or going to be Utah. Well, let's take a look at Washington State's plan for success, brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. And we head towards the Apple Cup. And that meeting with UW next week, Mike Leach has never beaten Chris Peterson head to head. No, nope, but you just look at the trajectory of how these teams have played this season and where that arrow is going for this guy, for this group. And it's never been that way in that matchup the last four times with Leach and Peterson. It's been Peterson's team that has been hotter, that's been feeling better, that's been, I think, a deeper team. And I don't know if that's the case this year. Rodriguez escapes. Gets to the sideline and falls inbounds and takes a sack all the way back to the original line of scrimmage. Maybe even lost an extra yard, so it will be fourth down and 11. You know, I think just watching these two teams in state, as I've gotten a chance to do, and living out here in the Pacific Northwest, you have watched a Washington team that's felt the burden of all that expectation this year. That is just two, three plays away from, from frankly, being right where Wazoo is. But they felt the way to that versus these guys with the mascot that takes the shirt off with all the, all the 12 year olds. They're just having the time of their life. It isn't thinking about anything else but the fun they're having in this community. Red Rodriguez on fourth down. 
Long throw. It's caught by Shun Brown, but he will be brought down. Wills shot of the line to gain by Dion Singleton. So a turnover on downs with 2.09 to go. Kick off your weekend and your week 11 Sunday NFL countdown tomorrow from Halle Berry to Obama from Biggie to Ric Flair. Drew Brees, Dak Prescott, Big Ben and the rest of the NFL's quarterbacks explain where some of the game's most creative audibles come from. Plus a sit down with Patrick Mahomes and Jared Goff as they chat about Monday night's matchup between the 9 and 1 Chiefs and the 9 and 1 Rams. Sunday NFL countdown later this morning at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN with two minutes to go. Keith Harrington will run out to the 35 yard line as the backup quarterback redshirt junior Trey Tinsley former walk on that's now on scholarship gets a chance to finish off the game. And Tinsley's going to find Tay Martin. He's down the sideline with the first down. I'll tell you what, that Monday night game, I think when we were kids growing up and just watching these kids in the stands today and everything else, it was the Bears and Dolphins. If I remember a, just a Monday night game, and I think of my little guy, and I know how excited he is to watch this game on Monday night, that's the one that comes to my memory. That I just kind of stack up and look at these offenses. Is that the undefeated and, Bears yes. team that went down and lost at the Orange Bowl? That's exactly right. And for Joe and, and Witt and Bug and the whole crew to have that opportunity Monday night for that match.